All right, guys, just pouring myself a drink and a happy Friday. And just thought we'll talk some shop. Having a beautiful sip of this fair rum from Belize, right? The rep is a really good friend of mine, uh, Julian Bettier from Noble Spirits. The first time I tried this, I always thought the label was deceiving. I said, ah, you know what? Maybe it's not going to be the best rum in the world. Jesus Christ, it's amazing. It's an amazing drop and five-year-old rum, right? And nothing added, so no sugars, no caramel essences and stuff like that. It's a, it's a beautiful, decent, pure rum, right? No vanilla, nothing like that. It's, it's a good, good drop, so I actually really enjoy this. Just thought I'll talk to you. I'm getting this question quite a lot recently, right? So Hivish, uh, we want to buy an investment property and, and I'm helping them with the loan structures, right? What would you recommend? Principal interest or interest only? I thought I'd say, okay. And I say, okay, that's an easy answer. And, and I would default to say, okay, let's go for interest only repayments for investment properties. Uh, and then I give them a reason why. So I just thought I'll explain because I'm getting these questions asked a lot. So I'll just give you my rationale why I would recommend interest only payments for investment properties now it's obviously every case is different and advice would be given on a case-to-case -case basis so broking advice would be given on a case-to-case -case basis and everything we do when we structure loans are very are tailor-made for the client and their specific circumstances but in general as an investor myself as well when you're looking to buy an investment property the reason why you would you know lean towards let's say this way so it won't say it's 100 percent where you have to go but i would recommend or i would lean towards interest only it's for a couple reasons one cash flow right so let's say you're you know if your repayments were approximately 1500 p and i if you're paying something interest only it'd probably be a thousand right i'm using a rough hypothetical fee, but it would be significantly less so with investments, obviously, if you can save on the cash flow, you can put it towards other uses, other investment vehicles, right? So let's say you had two properties, P and I, you'd be paying a thousand five hundred each, will be three grand a month. <clears throat> but if you had it, if you switch to interest only payments and saving that cash flow, you'd be paying only two grand a month, right? So in essence, you actually could be, if your serviceability was good, you'd actually have enough cash flow to fund a third investment property that would be growing in value for you or you could put the extra cash into something else. So cash flow is one reason why you'd go for interest only, right? For an investment property. It's also the tax deductibly part of the debt. You can't really do anything about the principal amount, right? So if you have investment property, the interest portion is tax deductible and therefore that whole chunk will be tax deductible. Now, with an investment property, when you pay principal and interest, and let's say that principal portion was $500, right? What you're doing is you're transferring $500 from your savings bank account, from your pocket, to, to the home loan account. You're essentially not creating any new wealth uh, for the asset, right? You're just paying off the debt. So the only way an investment property would go up is the capital gain over time. That's actually building new wealth on that property. When you're paying the debt off, you're actually not creating any new value towards a property. You're only, it's a transference of wealth from your pocket to the home loan account. And it, to get that to refinance out later, it's always a painful process and you can only get 80% out. 